Christians. Having a godly attitude is not just an option, but a necessity. A godly attitude is an attitude that seeks to please God in every aspect of life. This means you're seeking to praise the Lord with your thoughts, your words, and actions. The Bible tells us as believers to be set apart from the world, to live a life that is holy and pleasing to God. This means that our attitudes, actions, and behaviors should reflect the character of Christ. As a matter of fact, it means that we should seek to be Christ-like, meaning we love like Him and show compassion to others like He did. In Colossians 3 verse 23 to 24, the Apostle Paul writes, Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and that the master you are serving is Christ. This verse emphasizes the importance of having a godly attitude in everything we do. In this letter to the Philippians, Paul writes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Philippians 4 verse 13. This is not a verse that is meant to be some type of slogan whenever you want to achieve a goal in life like starting a business or passing an exam, no. Paul's attitude when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, was one of complete reliance on Christ. Paul is not saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me for his own personal benefit. Paul's desire was to serve God and share the gospel with others, and regardless of the obstacles put in his way, he is saying he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him in order for him to fulfill his calling, which is to preach and teach the gospel and glorify Christ. Furthermore, a godly attitude involves serving others for the glory of God. In Matthew 20, verse 28, the Bible says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. As followers of Christ, we are called to emulate this example, and we too must love our neighbor, and we too must seek to serve our neighbors. This means putting the needs of others before our own, and seeking to help others in any way we can. Now, my final point is to do with prayer. I believe that prayer is an essential aspect of a godly attitude. You cannot have a godly attitude if you don't have a prayer life. As Christians, we are called to pray without ceasing. And so I want to encourage you, dear listener, let's not make it a habit to only go before the Lord and ask for things. Let's not always go to God and ask the question, Lord, what can you do for me? But rather, go before God and ask Him to work on you and in you. Ask the Lord 
God, develop my character. Help me to change my attitude. With this understanding, let us go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, touch our lives, Master. Develop a godly attitude within us. An attitude that is Christ-centered and not self-centered. Give us an attitude that seeks to glorify Christ and not to glorify self. If we were ungrateful, touch our hearts and convict us. Lord, open our eyes so that we could see your goodness and develop an attitude of gratitude. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 to 16 says, But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. 4. Who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach Him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. Lord Jesus, help us to be more like you. Help us to have a desire to do God's will. Help us to have a humble spirit. Help us to have a meek spirit. I pray that we may never be people who are full of pride. May we never be people who are too proud to serve others or too proud to love others. We desire to love like you, Lord Jesus. When you walked on this earth, you loved sinners. You loved the poor, the rich, and those who were considered to be society's outcasts. Lord, We desire to walk in your footsteps. We desire to have a heart that is so full of the love of God. A heart that is filled with a godly love. A love that doesn't see someone's status, their race, or their situation. My Lord, Help us to walk in the kind of love that is described in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8. For your word says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Lord Jesus, you have shown us mercy time and time again. You have been kind to us and you have been faithful and gentle. You have loved us. 
you have welcomed us with open arms regardless of our flaws. Give us the grace and power to turn away from sin. Help us to show mercy to others and to forgive. May we never repay evil with evil, but instead may we imitate Christ and repay evil with good. Help us, Lord, to be kind to others, to be gentle and encouraging to others, especially with our actions and words. I pray that we would be so filled with the Holy Spirit that our words would uplift others and draw them nearer to Christ. Thank you for hearing this prayer, Master. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Not every storm, not every crisis, not every challenge or problem is bad for you. What I mean is that some situations we encounter, yes, they'll be difficult. They will be painful. But in the long run, that storm, it will be for your good. That crisis will work out for your good. That challenge will make you stronger. You see, someone will get sick, but recover in such a way that they can only acknowledge the hand of God, the miracle working power of the blood of Jesus. Someone's plans will get disrupted only to find that that disruption led them to a better destination. Someone's plans will get delayed, but that's perhaps God's way of saying, not yet. I have something better in store. I have a better time in mind. Every crisis in life is not bad for you. Sometimes God uses adversity. God places you in tough situations only for you to grow, for you to develop stronger faith, for you to mature. So the next time a problem presents itself, the next time you face a crisis, just stop for a moment and ask God, what do you want me to learn from this? What do you want to develop within me? Our faith must be tested. And perhaps Proverbs 17 verse 3 will give us a better understanding of why the testing of our faith is necessary. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the heart. In other words, just as silver and gold are purified by fire, so the Lord purifies the hearts of men by fiery trials. If you want to refine gold, you use the furnace. And if the heart of man is to be refined, the Lord tests the heart. Meaning that my faith and your faith must stand trial at one point or another. Our natural tendency as humans is to think that if something seems unpleasant, then it must not be from God. But we must realize that God sees things quite differently than we do. The trials that God allows in our lives, they're meant to make us complete so that we lack nothing as believers. Trials actually come for our development as Christians. 
trials come so that we can build on the current level of faith that we have and then reach greater heights. That's why the Bible says the testing of your faith produces perseverance. The testing of our faith is what leads to spiritual maturity. Knowing this should change the way we view hardships and the way we respond to those difficult times in our lives. Now let's pray. Lord, I thank you for bringing me through life's adversity and challenges. Through every storm, may you develop my character. Through every crisis, I pray that you will strengthen my faith. Through every challenge or problem, may I become a more mature believer. Philippians 3, 12 through 14 says, Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, as we press on, as we strain forward and run this race of faith, give us grace, Father. The grace to endure those uncomfortable lessons. The grace to hold on and never lose sight of your promises. Father, give us the grace to understand that sometimes the answer to our prayers may be delayed, but that does not mean that they are denied. God, give us grace to understand that sometimes you might say no to our request because you have something better and bigger in store for us. Should we experience any disruption in our lives, May we understand that at times, this disruption may be divine disruption. You may intervene in our plans in order to guide us to a certain destination or in a particular direction. But regardless of how uncomfortable the process may be, we will continue to trust in you will continue to believe in you and to have faith in you. Your word in James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. It says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Father, work in me. Lord, help me to remember that when my faith is tested, you are working to produce a good work within me. Lord Jesus, you are full of grace and compassion. You're full of mercy and kindness. Lord, as you test my faith, I pray that you would cleanse me of all impure thoughts. Cleanse me of all unholiness, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O God and renew a right spirit within me. 
I pray that every trial you send my way will accomplish its purpose. If it's patience that you want to develop within me, then Lord, may your will be done. If it's self-control or humility that you want to develop within me, may your will be accomplished in my life. I pray that even as my faith is under fire, let me not murmur and complain, but instead may I continually be found to be looking to you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would give me the strength to stand when my faith is being tested. I pray that you would give me a heart that's filled with joy, even when I'm being tested. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Father, I pray that I would be steadfast and immovable in my faith. Whatever happens in this life, may it not sway me from my faith in Jesus Christ. Should the miracle that I pray for come to pass or not, may my faith still remain in you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I bless your holy name. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray and I give you thanks. Amen. Time is the most precious commodity that we have. However, unlike other commodities, time is something that we all want more of, but it's also something we have no ability to acquire. We cannot negotiate our way to having more time. We cannot set up accounts that accumulate the interest of time. We cannot establish businesses or give ourselves to a job to acquire more time. Time owns us, not the other way around. We cannot control time. Time controls us. Time restricts us even. And as a result, most of us have uttered the words if I only had more time. I'm sure we have all said these words at some point. If only we had more time to complete this or that task. If only we had more time to invest in this or that relationship. If only we had more time, we would do this. If only we had more time, we would learn a new language, travel more, spend more time with family, 